Let's get back to some trending topics this morning. We talked a little bit about uh, the Super Bowl yesterday, but there is so Ugh. much more to talk about besides the actual game. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about all the things that came out of yesterday's game. Uh, first of all, I have a video queued up here. I don't know if you watched closely to Katy Perry's performance yesterday. Well, Mickey, you're the only, who's the one who didn't watch? Anastasia, you didn't watch the game. Watch. So let's see what she thinks about this. Okay, let's Look see if this. we can take up our iPad here before. It's a quick sh video, so you have to uh, really pay attention. Um, of course. So what are we watching for? Uh, we lose it. Oh, there it goes. Nope, we're gonna lose it. All right. That was a lot of fun. Let's see if I can get that back up. Um, but yeah, no, Katy Perry had a great halftime performance with Missy Elliott. Um, make it, and Lenny Kravitz, Lenny if Kravitz. anyone missed him, if you blinked, you might have missed his his uh, performance in there last night. But uh, my yeah. kids saw her wearing this outfit that said 49 on it and said, "Daddy, what's with the 49?" But it was the 49th Super Bowl, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, comments about uh, Katy Perry's halftime show. Come on, John, you were watching a little <laughs> bit more than just football. I actually missed the halftime show too. I had to step out to get some groceries. See? <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to that. I know I have to go get some stewed tomatoes. <laughs> was anyone else uh, at the store before the Super Bowl? I was at Safeway. The chip aisle was empty. I, no, I, I tweeted a picture of it yesterday. Uh, you can go back in my Twitter feed and see it. But an empty chip aisle. Um, and the guy that was stocking them, he just, he was sweating and he had boxes <laughs> everywhere. It was like, and he was throwing chips. And I felt kind of bad for him. And I, I, I said, excuse me, I need to get through with my cart. And he's just, he was so in the zone of stocking chips. So it was a madness at the store before the Super Bowl. Yeah, Anastasia, this probably doesn't surprise you as a nutritionist. You're seeing that there's, we wait for certain events. Whether it be the Super Bowl, whether it be the Grey Cup, whether it be Stanley Cup, whether it be whatever, mm -hmm. we eat poorly during these events. It's a free for all. It, it, it's like a license just to have fun and go overboard. Did you know that next to Thanksgiving, that Super Bowl Sunday is the the biggest um, eating day of the year? <laughs> I know. I was surprised Incredible. too. Hmm. It's that party atmosphere. We're around other people. We're having fun, and we just don't realize how much chips we're eating. When John and Mickey here are eating and drinking wine and enjoying it, why can't we splurge? Why can't we indulge? Well, there's nothing wrong with indulging. It's just portion sizes. Do you really need, like, the third glass of wine? John, or... do you need the third glass of do. wine? <laughs> in moderation, everything in moderation, but, yeah. Yeah, a handful of chips, maybe not the whole bowl. Just, you know, take it easy. Is it, is, it an ex, is it an excuse we're looking for, Mickey? I don't know. I think it's because it's accessible. Everything's laid out, and mm -hmm. there's a smorgasbord of deliciousness. And I know for myself, it's you go to the sweets, and then it's like, oh, I think I need to cut that with something <laughs> salty. You go to the salty, and you're like, oh, I need to wash that down with something. And it's just kind of this, it's, it's accepted. It's true that snack food is designed yeah. for us to eat more. Because we're all but, doing yeah. it. It tastes yeah. so good, right? Kate's yeah. got her hand in the in the <laughs> cookie jar, so why can't I reach over and grab some more chips? Join right? in, yeah. Jo join in to the fun. Mm -hmm. It's part of the this little culture, but we should change that. Yes, I mean you don't want to wake up with a food hangover or another kind of hangover on Monday morning when you have to go into work. So you know, just take it easy. You can have treats throughout the week. You don't need to pack it into just one day where you get the stomach ache, the bloating. And all that, you know. Fun but it's just side so effects. good, Anastasia. But the Come first on. Bite tastes the best. Yes. So, so the fifteenth <laughs> should taste just as good. Come on. It's all part of the fun. What would you suggest for healthy snacks then? Boo. Mm. <laughs> I'm not going to your place. <laughs> healthy food can still be delicious. Yeah. One of my favorites is guacamole. That's just what we had last mash night. Mash up mm -hmm. avocado, squeeze a little lime, a little sea salt, and you're good to go. Sure, you can still have some tortilla chips, or you can dip some veggies into your guacamole. Mm -hmm. That's uh, a great idea. Fruit tray, mm -hmm. like right. get some fun fruit. Don't yeah. just get the boring apples. Mix it up. And we can set an example as parents too, because I've done the same thing as well too. Is that I brought the fruit trays and the, the veggie trays and say, okay, guys, before you reach in there and grab a, you know two handfuls, fistfuls of chips. John, grab, <laughs> grab, grab some uh, veggies, you know, and that's a smart idea. Yeah, it's if you simple. have it out, have it available, your kids are more likely just to, you know, pick some up. Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing we all ate pretty bad, though, yesterday. Make you say yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. I think oh. I did okay over at my house. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, we did chips and guacamole, a little bit of pop, and then we made dinner. 
sort of? Oh, well, I made dinner. <laughs> <laughs> While everyone else watched, I made dinner and hung out in the kitchen. Yeah, so, nice. um, Well, you are also saying that um, football might be changing its ways a little bit coming up. Um, you mean with the, you're talking about the um, the way the kids are playing football? Mm. Well, a lot of mums, there's a research that was out that came out from Bloomberg, and they found that half of the mums surveyed did not want their sons playing football. You and I have kids. Uh, you have little Leo, who's about to turn two on Friday. That's right. Do you want your boy playing football? Not really. I, I worry about concussions, just the, the high impact sports. I mean, there's so many ways to be active that aren't as risky mm. that I'm hoping he'll you know, gravitate towards. Yeah. Are, are we still that concerned though? I mean, there's there's bigger helmets, they've got more studies that are being done, and you know this being at the U of A, so many studies are being done and research is being conducted about the safety of sports. We're trying to make it safer. Are, you, are we, we still as parents, you know, I'm kind of that way too, but. Well, the other thing that has to happen is a change in the culture, so. Uh, you know, players used to get uh, concussed, knocked out, and uh, they just put some smelling salts under their nose right. and put them back out on the field or on the ice. So we're starting to see changes in uh, if players do have any kind of blackout, they have to leave the field, they have to go and get assessed. If they do have an injury, then they're out of the game. It's mandatory. Mm -hmm. For instance, in yesterday's game, there was, a guy, there was right. a guy that was hit, and uh, he couldn't even come back out at the end of the the end of the game right. if there was a celebration. Um, so I think that that's a really important change that we've seen because part of the problem with the concussions from what I understand is an accumulation of concussions and particularly ones that we don't know that have occurred. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's very important because earlier this year in college, in a, in a big college game, there was very clearly a case of a quarterback who had been concussed and he was sent back in. Wow. And um, uh, there was a lot of hue and cry after the game about that. Uh, and so I think that's an important step. And, um, you know, hopefully our administrators, our sports administrators are, are very aware of this, particularly for the younger kids. Yeah, I just signed up my kids for lacrosse. You want to see mm -hmm. a violent sport? That is violent. <laughs> There's just, so I'm, you know, as a parent, I'm just taking a deep breath. But you know what, in lacrosse, I think the parents, from my experiences, might be actually be worse than the players. So careful, careful out there. Oh, worse in what sense? Um, well, my brother grew up playing lacrosse, so I spent a lot of time watching lacrosse in the spring. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there were some punches thrown in the, uh, <laughs> from the parents. And <laughs> let me just say, oh, I think the, <laughs> the parents might be a rougher crowd on some <laughs> occasions. Yeah, well, this gentleman here, Dr. John C. Spence, is our one of our panelists this morning. He's a lead researcher with the U of A, University of Alberta, uh, Particip Participation Teen Challenge. They approached you and they said, Dr. Spence, Let's take a look at this and see if it's viable, see if it's making any sense. Yeah. True? Yeah. Yeah, so the Teen Challenge Program um, is a program in which uh, microgrants are awarded to communities or programs that are offering physical activity, sport, fitness for um, children and youth. And uh, they wanted to know if it was having any uh, impact. So these types of programs are very useful in, in places where maybe you don't have a lot of opportunities, smaller rural communities, for mm -hmm. instance, isolated communities in the north and um, uh, in uh, places like uh, Newfoundland and uh, rural uh, Canada. And uh, what we saw was that the, the program was having an impact and the people who were administering uh, these little micro grants and starting up these physical activity programs in these communities were very excited about the uh, uh, the benefits that uh, that accrued from it. Mm. And we have a viewer question for you. Uh, take a look. Hi, my name is Walter, and my, I'm from Toronto. My question for your guest is this: uh, Can you tell us more about the impact that the Participation Teen Challenge has had on Canadian youth? Are young kids actually staying active? So the gentleman was asking about young kids staying active. It's been a big, big discussion over the last few years. I mean, we've got kids who are overweight. Mm -hmm. um, what are you finding? Um, in terms of organized sport, we haven't seen much change in about the last 50 years in the proportion of no kidding in organized sport uh, in the proportion of children in. Uh, North America who participate in organized sport. In fact, it might even have increased in that period. Where we've seen big changes are in uh, active play. So younger children are not outdoors as much as they used to. 
for instance, maybe when you and I, Phoenix, were younger children, uh, our kids are not outside as much and playing sort of rough and what we would call rough and tumble play mm -hmm. and being very active. And they're not uh, walking to and from school and riding their bike to and from school as much as they used to. Those are the two areas where we're seeing a big decrease. And then the other concern is we are much more sedentary. So we're sitting down much more than we used to. So those two things sound like we're, they're the opposite end of the continuum, but the way the research is going now, we sort of treat those uh, separately. We need to promote physical activity and we need to reduce the amount of time we sit. And just by being physically active doesn't address the sitting, what we call the sitting problem. Anastasia, you're, you're nodding your head. You buy into this. Yeah, that, it makes total sense. You see everyone driving their kids to school, and, uh, and you see little kids on iPads, and there's so much screen time. When I was a kid, we played in our backyard on the swing set, gymnastics, just building forts and running around, and you know, coming home when it was dinner time. Yeah. Miki, does this surprise you at all? To hear that we're sitting too much? No. <laughs> <we're> sitting here. <laughs> Should we do the show standing? <laughs> no kidding. No, I, I, I feel the same. I see that all the time with um, my friends, kids, and such. And we did. We were outside all the time. Um, I also think it's interesting about organized sports, too, that it's the same amount, if not more. I grew up playing ice hockey as well. And so being active was always a part of my childhood. So it's interesting with the yeah. video game culture and the staying indoors. Yeah, there, there seems parents, uh, there's a culture of uh, wanting to do, you know, wanting to do good for their kids. And mm -hmm. part of it uh, seems to, the, the feeling seems to be that we need to organize their lives. And mm -hmm. so things like just random play is not part of it, but we will make sure they get to the lacrosse game. Uh, but what might happen is their brother or sister might be sitting in the stands watching the lacrosse game with them and not having an opportunity to be playing outside at mm -hmm. that same time too. That's a great point. Uh, and there's big concerns. Parents are very concerned about safety, both sort of stranger danger and then traffic uh, safety. Uh, and uh, we're very aware, we hear it on the media, if there has been those events, a child getting hit by a vehicle or a child being, uh, um, you know, uh, kidnapped. So, um, but those are fewer, those instances are fewer than they were, you know, again over that same period. It's so. that, that paranoia as parents. Mm -hmm. Yes, a you, parent, I think. done it to ourselves. They'll tell you that, you know, the worst thing that could possibly happen, I will feel that, you know, I've completely let my family down if anything ever happens to my child. So there seems to be this hypervigilance, which means now staying inside and playing on your video games is uh, more acceptable. It's interesting that participation has, resur has a resurgence now. There yeah. was, they were gone for a little bit, yeah. now they're coming back and that's a positive thing. Yeah, and uh, a big part of their focus has been trying to, uh, you know, tie into that nostalgia with the parents about, remember what you used yep. to do, uh, how about getting your kids out doing those types of things, yeah. Our trending poll question this morning is asking, how many hours per week do you exercise? Is it less than five, between five and 10, or more than 10? Post your answer on Twitter or Facebook, and you'll find the link to our trending poll question at Trending on Shaw. And uh, still to come, we're going to take a quick break, but lots more as we get into the rest of the show. Uh, the return of winter, we'll have more details on the weather coming up in the next week or so. In 15 minutes, uh, we'll be talking about healthy eating habits as you go work out outside and uh, waking up your wardrobe from winter. We'll be talking about that in about 40 minutes. You're watching Trending on Shaw.